Name an annoying thing that people base their entire personality about. Harry Potter, conspiracy theories, but I'm going to risk it all and talk about a particular group of people that's basically a gang, a cult, for lack of better terms. If somebody drives a Jeep, you can bet your sweet ass the whole world knows. You can go to any of their social media pages. It will be nothing but pictures of that Jeep. You might see one or two of their kids or dog, but I'll bet my last damn dollar they're sitting in that Jeep. They love that damn Jeep so much that they go out and buy a second Jeep for their first Jeep, kind of like a pet Jeep, if you will, so that the first Jeep is not lonely. If a Jeep owner's significant other was ever kidnapped, they couldn't describe to the police the last thing they were wearing, the color of their eyes, or hair. But you let that damn Jeep get stolen, they can describe that son of a bitch right down to the last screw that's holding on that LED light bar that's bright enough to drive through outer space. I once asked a guy, what's the deal with Jeep people? He gets an all close, and in his best Clint Eastwood voice, he says, it's a Jeep thing. You wouldn't understand. Well, hello there. Welcome back to the shop. Um, we've been working on this fine vehicle right here, the Wagoneer. Uh, it will not run anymore because I burnt some wires, apparently. The, uh, oh, the uh, park shift solenoid in the transmission decided that it was not happy with life and uh, sent a little bit of extra voltage when it was in park and I was trying to start it. And it burned it up a few wires, so I'm redoing all that right now. All right, guys, I forgot to record an intro to removing the radiator. Unfortunately, I found out later that there was a giant piece of cardboard blocking off the radiator and couldn't figure out for the life of me before removing out the radiator why this thing kept overheating when it was in the middle of winter and in the 20s here in Utah. After I pulled it, found a giant piece of uh, cardboard. I guess it was still a good idea to replace the radiator because it was leaking, so check this out. Not too hard to install. Didn't take too long. Everything's all tied up right now on the uh, radiator. So get the new radiator in, got it bolted in. We got our uh, main radiator hoses hooked up. And then down at the bottom there, I hooked up our automatic transmission cooler lines. So they're all done. Now, next step is to fill it up, check for leaks. I gotta go to the store and get some coolant. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna finish tearing up the wiring harness. As you can see, it's uh, pretty bad. So I'm gonna rewire that, grab some wire, redo that stuff, follow it down, figure out where she got cooked. And uh, it'll be fun, I'm sure. Anyway, that should fix my cooling problems. So funny thing was is that it's been overheating and even in the middle of winter, it's like, it hasn't been above 50 for since almost November. Here we are in almost, tomorrow's April 1st. Uh, couldn't figure out what it was, did a thermostat, uh, flushed the coolant, put a new uh, um, clutch fan on. Yeah, it was still overheating. So I pulled out that old radiator because I figured maybe it was clogged up or something. And I found a big, piece of cardboard stuck between it and the air conditioning uh, condenser. So yeah, thanks previous owner, that was awesome. So we got that fixed. So shouldn't have any more issues with overheating hopefully. So next step is to fix the uh, wiring, like I said. 72 hours later. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the next step here. We have, so, this wire right here, there is nothing on it. It all melted off, all the coating. And uh, since this is melted all the way to the terminal block here, um, I can't just cut it off and try.
trying to fix it. I'm not that good at soldering and it'd probably just crack and break later. So what I did is I bought some uh, heat shrink here. I'm just gonna cut this wire off about here in the middle. The wire seems really good. It's not really burnt or look weird. So I'm gonna take and put this stuff on it. We're gonna heat shrink it and then we'll cut it off and wire in, hook up our new wire to that one. And then we can run all our new wires across, hook them up, and uh, hopefully then we can get it to start again. Been a big project ripping this thing back apart. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Do a little time-lapse stuff. This is like day three, day four. I don't even know, I've lost track. It's just gonna be one long freaking video. Good luck. All right. Wiring is all repaired and connected over to here. That's where our meltdown started. I still need to uh, hook this guy back in the cab to do a quick test. Try to keep myself from taping and doing stuff ahead of time. So I'm gonna hook that up, do a little test, see if I can get it to crank over yet, and then we'll go from there. All right, testing has commenced and everything seems pretty good. I still have a starter uh, signal for my starter to jump, to start. So we're gonna replace this guy, this factory solenoid with this Ford style one. It's a little more heavy duty. And uh, I'm gonna kind of fix some stuff up. I think I want to, what I really want to do is put a fuse box in for all this crap. These are all on fusible links. They are all on fusible links on this thing, except for this one that I replaced and put a fuse in. And I kind of don't like that setup. So if something blows, you can't really fix it. I know there's a fuse box under the hood, but I'd rather put this on a fuse box as well. So we may just buy one, oops, and put it on here. So, um, Starter is also not kicking over. I've noticed it's kind of smelly after trying to do that. So we may have a bad starter too. So I may just pull that, buy a new one, and I think then we should be on our way to having the engine run again. Um, I'll wrap up all the wiring tomorrow with uh, new tape, cut off some of the zip ties, fix that up, and then uh, we're back on our way to being running almost. I feel well, this is about as far as we've made it today. I didn't show you this. <laughs> so here's our bad wire. This was the one that mainly caught fire. So um, this is one of the other melted ones right here. It's getting redone. And then we're gonna run this brown wire to replace this green wire. I just don't have any green wire. So I gotta go get some heat shrink and then I'm gonna cover that until it goes down over here into this block, fuse block thing. And then I gotta run a few more wires over here. We kinda get it organized. And then once we make it back over here, we can tie into this wire that got burnt. We can tie it into this wire that got burnt and that wire that got burnt. And we are finally good. I've had to do a bunch of splices, mainly because the factory used like tape to cover these up, so I've spliced them this way with the heat shrink splices all over the place. There's just a ton of them I replaced all throughout this harness. Like over here, there's a bunch. You see like right there, just everywhere. So we're slowly making our way from driver's side back over to passenger side. We'll start taping at this side. Uh, I'm gonna hook everything so it's easier just to pull this whole thing out this way towards the front and then just put the tape on, put the the wire looming back on. I have a bunch of it saved here.
So anyway, I've been messing with this for the greater part of Saturday, and we're getting pretty close to being able to fire it back up. I'm gonna have to go under the hood and make sure there's nothing else. Also have this, uh, this is a Ford relay that we're gonna use in it instead. I'm getting rid of the uh, neutral safety switch in this thing. It's my truck. So if you're too stupid to put it in park or neutral before you try to start it, I guess you get what you deserve by being dumb. Anyway, yeah, that doesn't work on the vehicle and I'm going to delete it. Um, anyway, so we just need to go that way and finish some stuff up. Maybe we'll do that Monday. We'll see. Anyway, we'll continue on. This is going to be like my longest ever uploaded video, I think. Yay. Day two. Okay, welcome back to still fixing the stupid uh, Wagoneer. Grand Wagoneer. Uh, anyway, uh, I've been trying to figure out why it runs like crap. The Motocraft carburetor was garbage, obviously. It's a Ford product. So, in trying to fix it, I decided to put an Edelbrock uh, carburetor on there just on the stock uh, intake manifold so it kind of worked a little bit it was okay but it's been idling really high and really hard to tune the carburetor so last week I was messing around with it sprayed a little bit of carburetor cleaner around it and it idled even higher so I've got vacuum leaks on the intake somewhere so what I decided to do since I need to replace all the stupid uh, gaskets on there. I bought this kit right here to do it. The Svelpro kit to do the intake manifold gaskets. I decided what's one step better. I've got a four barrel carb. Why not use a four barrel intake manifold? And here we go. This is a non EGR, um, set up here so we won't have to worry about that garbage and, How dare you? garbage and less vacuum leaks so we're gonna go ahead and time lapse this and start tearing apart the intake on the old 360 here uh nice thing is is that i also have these sweet old school chrome valve covers somewhere i don't know where i put those right there in the back of the jeep maybe been storing all the crap back there. Yep, oh, there they are. They're right back under the seat. And I even have gaskets to go with it. I locked all the doors. Yep. Because somebody's really going to steal this wagon here right now. Because it's in its prime condition. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and start ripping stuff apart. Luckily, I just put brand new coolant in it too. So I get to drain that again. Yay! <sighs> I give up. All right. We got a new radiator. It's actually staying cool now. We got the AGI right now. We've got an Ellibrock four barrel on there. And it's time to do the next step. eternity later okay about an hour later there we go try to light the same way like she's really clean guy I bought this from said the engine only had about 20,000 miles on it uh, and it looks super clean it does rev good it runs good other than the intake I could kill the idiot who decided to just use silicone to hold down the valve cover gaskets or valve covers instead of using valve cover gaskets. Why? They make them. Go buy them. They probably cost just as much as your freaking tube of silicone, you dingleberry. 
Oh. Anyway, that's off. That's all I'm doing tonight. Tomorrow I will start uh, reassembly. Got a full gasket kit. Whoa, not fun. At least the used these guys on the china rails. So I don't have to really clean that up much. Those are a little hard. So. Ugh. Got a lot of cleanup here today, tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, there we go. There's the, there's the other one. So, whew, that sucked. Those things weigh a ton. Probably a hundred pound intake manifold. That's stupidly heavy. So, all right, that's it for today. I'm done. Next part tomorrow. The next melon. All right, another day. Uh, I didn't think to start recording, but anyway, the valley pan gaskets in, intake manifold gasket. I, I siliconed it in. I put the China rails in, silicone those. We are ready to start putting in the intake manifold. Let's hope this doesn't take all day and isn't such a pain in the butt compared to taking out the old one. Anyway, let's do a little time lapse of me sticking this thing in. the intake manifold on i was testing these uh ugly chrome covers i got see how they fit they seem to fit fine uh carburetors not on yet we just i just threw it on there to keep crap out of the engine and we got one more valve cover put on installed my cork with a little bit of silicone so it'll stay on there nice so next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install these bolt them down I bolted down the intake manifold already. Got it all sealed up. Things are looking nice and clean. So, making some progress here, finally. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the valve covers on, bolt them down, and start reassembling. I think we're gonna be onto this rocker here, because it's pretty chewy. Then we're gonna put our fender flares on the back here like we did on the front. We got some wide track flares on the front. We're gonna put them on the back. And then we're gonna start fixing up a little bit of the interior. I do need to fix some of the floor right through here. It's getting a little soft and chewy. Uh, I'll probably do the brake lines tomorrow as well. Get some major stuff done on it. And then hopefully we'll be able to fire it back up again. It's been dead since January, I think. That's the last time I drove it. So, anyway, we'll be back later. Meanwhile. All right, welcome back. It's day number, uh, we've lost track because it's taken so long to like fix this thing up. But today's goal is brake lines. Ooh, baby. These are our extended brake lines. We've got two for the front, one for the back. They're stainless steel, braided, and coated with Teflon. So that's pretty sweet. We're going to go ahead and put these on today and then see if my wife will come up and come out and help me bleed the brakes. She doesn't like bleeding brakes, so it might be a stretch. We'll see. Anyway, let's get on to installing brake lines.
Next morning. guys that was a pain in the butt but there's our new stainless steel brake line installed yeehaw it was a pain everything's kind of rusty and old on this truck so I am kind of cleaning it up as we go along so I'm gonna put the wheel back on this side and we'll go do the other side hopefully it's a little bit easier I sprayed down some PB blaster and hopefully that will make it come off easier I sprayed this side down with WD-40. Should have just gone to a tried and true PB blaster like normal and done that. So we'll go ahead and knock this side out now that I know what tools to use. Hopefully it will be easier, but it is a 30 some odd year old vehicle. So probably not. Didn't rust proof anything, unfortunately. All right, let's get to this side and then we can do the back and really cry. side is now installed that only took like 20 minutes so check that out it's all done hooked up this side was way easier this side took me an hour and a half or more to do so uh, now we get to do the back here's our what's left for our rear hose uh, so many copper crush things for the back, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Looks like that's where the pipe goes in, and maybe it's just a yeah. It's just too threaded fitting, so I don't actually need any crush washers for that. So cool. This side goes to the axle right there. Your Brake lines connect to each side of that. Uh, I guess that's the next step. I'm gonna go grab some lunch and we'll probably finish this up in a little bit. All right, new intake, carburetor, new wires, AMC 360. Elbrock intake, Elbrock carb, here we go. I have finished uh, the Wagoneer as much as I care to. I've had it for nine months. I decided to sell it on. I just don't use it very much. So today it goes bye-bye. It's the end of that project, I guess. We got another one lined up today we're gonna go look at. That'll probably shock you since I have two Jeeps right now, hint, hint. But 
The old rusty girls going back to Idaho. It's been fun. We've taken to the Grand Canyon and done a lot of stuff with it. But it's time for it to go. New owners from Pocatello, Idaho. So it's going to go on and live up there. So we're going to go look at a new one later today. Bye. <laughs>